Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey. Hi. The autobiographical aspect is that I think of the first draft of the book as my memory. And I've estimated my memory is probably like two, 20, 25,000 pages, I estimated. So from that first draft, I edited it into a, a written down first draft with the same structure as is in the final book. And then after I have that structure, I just edit it repeatedly, but not so that it's faithful to reality, but just using the material to create an effect. That's the entire novel. To me, third-person fiction is just more direct connection with the reader. Because the reader, once they start reading it, I think they'll think the author has thought about the story and they're telling me a story. The same, and they've thought about the story and structure and everything. But if the reader picks up a book and it's first-person and it's labeled fiction, then the reader has to um, think of not the author telling him a story, but a narrator telling him a story. So there's already a distance there. And also, when I pick up a book and read that it's in first person, I imagine the narrator just talking to me. I don't assume that the narrator has thought of a story, um, just structured it. I just assume since they're talking in first person that it's just like a monologue without pre-thought. And since I didn't write it in that manner, it just seems more direct and I think any time you con consciously think anything, then you have created a distance because you have the thought and then the feeling of yourself. So there's already a distance. So even if it was in first person, there'd be a distance already, unless I was writing unconsciously. Yeah, and Paul is always trying to reduce distance between, he feels there's distance between himself and everything, his own thoughts and everything. So he's trying to reduce that. It's also not important. And I just chose, um, a short one-syllable name that hopefully wouldn't cause a reader to think if it means something or not. And, and a name I hadn't already used, because I already used Sam. Yeah, it's a reflection on those things, time, time, death, memory, um, nature versus technology, a lot of things. And then, well, first I had the structure of a story. Even though it can seem like there's no story, there's just a very loose story. And then I put the reflections into that, yeah. Yeah, um, it can seem like that, but I, it, there's no development, I don't think. Because he just feels that way. He, that's just um, something he says out loud. And I don't know how long he feels that or... Yeah, okay, so it's yeah. open.
<laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, thank you. I don't think social media has reduced connection. It's either just been the same or or increased it, or maybe increased it for some people. Because when you're communicating on the internet in language, that seems like a closer connection than talking to someone in real life. Because you're ignoring all the superficial things like what they look like, what they're wearing. You're just focusing on their content, their message. So for people who connect mostly on, by meaning, through language, for those people, they're less lonely, I think. So Paul is probably less lonely because he has the internet. Yeah, um, it's much harder now to remember who said something, I think, because it's all just senses coming in your head. You have to, you have to do the work yourself of mem remembering this person said this, this person said this. But in real life, you see them, so your brain automatically remembers what the scene was. That's just one thing I've noticed. It's much harder to remember where information came from. I didn't think about um, that at all when I wrote it. So, maybe I was just, it was just very clear to me that the, in, him having the internet in his childhood isn't important to the book. Probably, that's what I thought. Okay. That's why I didn't include it, because I think when he was in middle school, it was 1997 or so, and he had the internet, but he didn't use it as much. In the past, you would only have your memory, but now, unless you don't look at the internet, you'll, you'll have your memory and many other memories. I haven't heard that before, but yeah, and that's interesting. The word distraction is used a lot in the book. And um, nothing can distract Paul enough from him himself to get fully get his attention. Paul's just viewing Taipei as representing otherness. But he knows it's still Taipei is still part of the same world. But he has a feeling of wanting something outside of life and he just attached those feelings to Taipei since Taipei sort of seems like a other world to him since he went there almost every year for a few weeks and his lifestyle while there was completely different in America because it would be over the summers when he didn't have school and he didn't speak the language, and the population looked different. So it seems like a other world to him. But he knows he's just using it to rep represent something that doesn't exist. I think when I write, it, it creates a helpful distance. Because it's a, it seems like a, I try to make it an equal distance to every, everything in the book, equal distance, say like 10 feet away, so I can look at it all. But Paul's distance while he's walking around the city is just, there's always distance, but it's, 
maybe like too close. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have perspective. But it's it's the same kind of distance as I have in writing. Him thinking is the same as me writing. Me writing is just a greater distance because writing to me is just thinking in a more organized, um, structured form. Yeah, well, he feels like he's from another, um, if anything, from another world or something. <laughs> yeah. And, well, he knows that's just a feeling he has. And I don't think he ever, he thinks, I'm going to find myself someday. He's just thinking, I'll just keep going. Sponge. Sponge. <laughs> but, he, but he forgets a lot also. He, he forgets. forgets so lot. he's also <laughs> squeezing yeah. the water out if he's a sponge. He's That's a, a good he, metaphor because he, he um, squeezes himself and forgets. Yeah. No, I think the loneliness and other feelings are the same, regardless of the surroundings. I think it's probably based on based on your genes, probably, how you experience loneliness. Because it, information comes in, you sense it, then your brain then your brain changes the sens sensations in the perceptions, and that's how you experience the world. So, what you get from outside is created by your brain, which is a result of your genes. And I, the human genetic makeup probably hasn't changed that much in like 50,000 years. So I think the experience of loneliness is probably the same. And that's what I, yeah, that's what I think when I'm writing about it. So I don't think I'm expressing a modern loneliness. I'm just expressing the same loneliness that is always there, I think. Um, Richard Yates was very dry, I think. Yeah. This, one is, this one is still dry when it's describing actions. But it also gets more um, the opposite of dry <laughs> for the non-action description. This is actually um, the style I wrote in, or I wrote closer to this style than Richard Yates' style for my first two non-poetry books. And then after those two books, I wrote Richard Yates and Shopping for American Apparel, which have the dry, concrete style. And then Taipei is a return to the first style I used. But I just view them as different styles. I don't think I'm combining poetry into it. Well, my first prose book was short story collection. And those writers influenced me mostly just because they're the ones I read in college that I liked a lot. They're just my favorite books, so that's how they influenced me. And I would study how they produced certain effects and use it in my writing. in some ways, in um, being very self-conscious. But in other ways, I don't feel close to him. I think he's... Um, maybe I just feel uncomfortable feeling close to him because it's hard to watch his videos on YouTube. 
he seems like very thinking too much. I hope not to be like that. I'm trying not to be like that. Because it leads to his depression and all that, I think. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But I, I more enjoy the other writers you mentioned. I enjoy reading those more. No, it's not important at all. I'd rather be considered just as not anything. Or I'd rather be considered just a person. But beyond that, I'd rather just be considered like a thing. And then beyond that, I'd rather just not be, um, have a word attached to me. Just like, if you want to describe me, you just have to like give someone my book or tell someone to meet me instead of saying he's a whatever.